rite of passage. It takes wild courage. Yes. Wild. Donald Trump very well could be the next I know, president. Like, dude. Not I saying think like I'm maybe just, it could happen. I know. that I think there's a part of me that's looking for any slight way of suppressing that, that I feel well, that. Well, the, I mean, look at the alternative. So, I know. It's it, it, like... Are you comfortable with the alternative? No. Right. No. So you're I'm America not. because most Americans... The, the polls, whole thing is uncomfortable. They don't want either of them. And I don't know if it's like an age thing or whatever is, it is. Is Kennedy out? Is that just like a wasted vo vote? Because I would vote for Kennedy. Oh, you didn't hear? No. <laughs> Kennedy was assassinated in 1963, was it? Shut up. <laughs> you didn't know that? No, Kennedy's not Robert. Here. I, I like Robert Kennedy. Um, I like him so much, I don't even mind his voice anymore. You know, he's got that medical thing. He is not going to be the next president, but he could so it's very a wasted well be. Vote. Is that what well, you're saying? Well, it could Why be a not? disruptor. Well, because he's, he's running as an independent. I know. So he's not in a party. It's wasted vote. Um, I know. <laughs> That's why I can't move that very much. very swooshy. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's running as an independent. I like him. No, he's I great. Really My like friend him. Joe Polish interviewed him at his event. Okay. And what he stands for is everything that we need. Now, it's a, you got to take in mind that most of it's bullshit. Everybody's just going to you know give you their resume spill or yeah. what you would put on a dating app type of thing. But there's some fundamental things in there that still would have you swipe right. Oh, I think he's old school. I think when I hear him talk, I'm like, this is a real man that is no BS. Yeah. Like, he I believe up, him. He brought up plant medicine. Mm -hmm. Like, there's just some certain things in mm -hmm. there that feel, okay, at least it'll move it, you know, a little bit or neutralize it for the love of God. Neutralize yeah. where we're going. Where we're going. Yeah, it's not good. Is it, yeah. it, it's gonna implode. Yeah. Well, yes and no. You know, I oftentimes if you go and you Google like Google like the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times or okay. something in like headlines of nineteen ninety one. Oh headlines of ninety seven. I have headlines done of eighty four. And have you done start this. like People were panicking then too. I have about done the this. Same You're, shit. I've literally said that verbatim. Everything. I know exactly what you're pointing to. Except I was watching this one thing. It was like from the, I want to say it was a YouTube and it was the late 70s or early 80s or something like that. Anyway, it was an interview and there was this woman that was channeling some, I don't know, and she seemed super Notre legit. Uh, it's something yeah. like that. Right. Uh, and the interviewer was telling her, when you go in or she was asking the person she was channeling, right, whatever that entity being was, she was saying, given our state today, do you have any words of encouragement? Do you, and in other words, giving this fear based doomsday situation that we're in today, do you have any words of encouragement? And it was right then and there that I realized, oh, my God, they've been doing this from the beginning of when mm -hmm. they could do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, same, same. It's, it, it won't, because okay. how do you control people? Right. How? The narrative. Fear. The narrative. Fear based. Yeah, that's the fear only based. way. Yeah. Well, there's, you're talking about like the mainstream media and all that. That's true, or the politicians. But I also think there's part of like bad shit happens in the world. Like, so oh, there's good things. We just have why different problems. Why aren't we interested in that? A lot of stuff happens sell. in the world. It doesn't sell. Why? Why? <sighs> it's just not provocative. Angela, there, have you sexy. ever seen some of these stories of these good, like the good news stories? Can I tell you something? Is there what what station has it? I want what is it? Uh, Sixty minutes? Yeah, CBS Sunday mornings, whatever. <laughs> Can I tell you something? What you're gonna hate this. So I watch pretty much religiously. I'm a cord cutter, so I don't have cable. But pretty much religiously, I watch Lester Holt. I love Lester okay. Holt. I think he's a great newsman. I got a chance to meet him. Um, really cool guy. So I watch all the stories like. Israel, Hamas, Ukraine, Russia. And I'm like, oh, you know, I'm fired up. Oh, Trump, Biden, I'm like, oh, my blood's boiling. And then at the end of 99% of his programs, his newscast, he has like this one segment that's like a, oh, a dog rescued a cat out of a tree and blah, blah, blah. It's like this beautiful story. I fast forward right through that. Because okay. it's just, it doesn't, it doesn't hit. Because it's boring. you might want to consider that you yourself have been programmed. I thought you were going to say medication, but yeah, program. Oh, I'm definitely programmed. And so programmed. now all you, all that program in you, it's not you, don't worry, but it has grown its own intelligence through you. 
That's all it wants. It wants fear. It wants drama. Oh, yeah. It wants, you know, all oh, that no, no, stuff. No, no, but no, no, I'm not denying. I, it's a program. Yeah. It's been programmed because we watch that stuff. Right. There's right. an agenda there. Right. Well, you do, uh, I think, I think if I'm making an assumption here, you do things like uh, like social media cleansing or something where you're not like, you'll take weeks or days and just try to stay away. Well, listen, I do it like, it's not like, um, hmm, I'm going to cleanse for 30 days. There's just literally everything in me goes... I don't want to do it right now. Mm. And I don't, it's not some agenda. It's not some like, uh, how do I want to say formula to it or goal to it. It's just, I'm not drawn to this thing and I'm just going to follow that. I'm not drawn to it right now. See, I just have to know. I have to know the news. I have to know what's happening. I wake up every morning. It's, it's toxic and I'll scroll through Twitter X, whatever you want to call it. And I have like a Ukraine war tab. I have like the Israel tab. I have like current news, I have Arizona, I have all these tabs and I just scroll through for just the, the fear, for the hate. And I just want to know what's happening. What's, what are the problems in the world? I'll read about, um, you know, what's happening in Kenya, what's happening in Thailand. Oh, there's a coup in uh, wherever, in uh, Burma. I, I don't know why I'm so addicted to that. I mean, part of it is because I've always been interested in like politics and like uh, um, travel and stuff. But part of it is like, I don't like to be indifferent, which is the word I wanted to bring up, by the way. I don't like to be indifferent. I want to educate myself. I want to have an opinion about things. If I happen to run into a guy in a bar from Sydney, Australia, like I want to know what Australia went through during the pandemic. I want to know how they were literally locking people up for posting things on Facebook about the COVID vaccine. Like that interests me. But how is that going to enrich my life? I don't know. Probably, probably I not. I think it goes so not. deep right now, but I feel like maybe we shouldn't go. I don't know why. The, the How deep I want to go feels exhausting to me because there's so many layers to what you're saying. And there's like the surf, the surface of the water is what you're like noticing and pointing to. And then there's so many things underneath mm-hmm. that have caused what you have been conscious enough to point to. Yeah. But one, we could go, we could stop and say, all right, why do you need that? And the only way you're ever going to know why you need that is just to be still for a minute. Like one day when you feel like you need to know, you just sit still and just see how you, what responds in you when you're just quiet and everybody's going, well, this is what I think. And this is what I think. And then you just choose for one minute to just not talk. (laughs) There's so much to just, you can, you can, it would just take something. Medication again. No, but you know what? There was this, God, I wish I remember what it was called. There was a, a new scientific study. A friend of mine sent me this YouTube I even forgot who was in it now, but one guy, um, they're well degreed, okay? So they know what they're talking about. And this guy's pointing to, okay, we studied this thing in the brain and we're finally discovering what causes, we'll even say like a val- like an experience of a valuable, fulfilling life and longevity. What is this mm. thing? There's something in the brain, I'll find out what it's called, see the notes later, um, and what activates it. Right. So I'll tell you one thing, I'm obese people, I'm just going to say like uh, morbidly obese people, there's a small, what we're pointing to is doing things you don't want mm. to do. And mm. suddenly that thing in the brain goes, mm. and then not just once, because then you might do something you don't want to do and then realize, actually, I want to start doing this. Okay. Uh, great for you. Keep going. But that's not what we're pointing to. Like forever doing the things you don't want to do. So that thing right there, it's not that you can't do it. You just don't want to do it so badly that you've convinced yourself you can't do it. But when we start doing those little things, so how many of those little things, meditation, Mm -hmm. we could go, some some people enjoy cold plunge, doesn't work for them, Mm -hmm. still good for you, whatever. But that's not what I'm talking about. The ones that are like, oh, please God, don't make me do the thing. That thing. That's what you walk towards? Well, I feel like it, especially, I think I've always kind of done this because I'll lean into the places that sort of freak me out a little bit, or I, oh God, I really don't want to do that. But what's what's behind me doing that? What's mm. on the other side, better said, of me doing that? So right. that really intrigues me. But then when I heard this, it upped my ante a little bit more because now I'm like, okay, there's just like scientific clarity 
mm. that it genuinely causes this experience of a valuable, enjoyable life. There's more to it, but that's one. That's a puzzle piece. So, what's your? What is your like in two sentences? What's your advice to About what you're, what you're not wanting to go? Now, your advice for whether it's obese people or someone oh. like me that's just my mind's racing. I can't sleep. The news, the news, all this craziness. Your advice is to go towards what you don't necessarily want to be doing. What you is... don't want to do. So now, now I'm not talking about heroin or things like this, right? Where you're like, mm, I, that's not good for me. Not that. I'm talking about, I'll give you an example. Um, pressing snooze. I don't mm. want to get up. It's cold. Or I work out I and I really love F45. This is like my jam right now. I really dig it. And every day you go, it's it's a you're pushing yourself, you're right. exerting yourself. And there's a couple days in there that it's like their cardio days, because even they're all mixed with some of it, some cardio. But then there's a straightforward cardio day, and you just you're dying. And so I'm like, I'm not gonna go on those days. Suddenly I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna go on those days. Mm. Those little things. Now some are bigger than others, but if you, we start with just the little things we don't want to do, you'll start to see how many little things that you can just do yeah instead of letting that other part win and then you'll watch don't take my word for anything get your own evidence suddenly something's going to start right and you're going to be expanding versus kind of like this sort of blob in the world of this is who i am and this is what i do you're not bound to that do you feel like some people out there are and this won't even offend those people because they don't know but they're not awake enough to even have that little birdie in their head, that little like something that's saying, hey, you need to do this. This is the hard part. Like, I feel like I know people that they don't even have that voice. So they don't even know what they don't want to do because they're just, again, to use the word indifferent, they just kind of, they're just taking one step after the other, one foot in front of the other. I'm going to say. Am I making any sense? You made so much sense. It's not that they don't have the voice. It's that they can't hear the voice through zero stillness. Mm. It's just like, go, flip through the screens, go on to the next. You, you, you're, there's not enough stillness to pause anywhere to reflect or contemplate like, hmm, I see that. You're just constantly yeah. on this. It's like you're possessed. It's like you're barely even in there anymore. Right, right. And it's that, shh, you just did that thing. I can sit there, like I play golf and stuff, and I like sports. So usually it's like golf and sports on my, on my thing whether it's YouTube shorts or Instagram or whatever. And I can sit there and I'm like, I just burned 35 minutes looking at these little short clips of, I didn't learn anything. I didn't really get anything out of it, but I just burned 30 minutes of my life just going like this. And I see people, you see people in a, in a coffee shop, at, at dinner, you see a couple at dinner and they're sitting there and they're both on their phones and you just see their finger going like this. So like, what is that? What is that? You're saying though, I didn't get, I didn't get anything out of it. No. Not only that, it's so bad for your brain. It is so bad. It's causing our brains to absolutely glitch. The science we, back that? We are, yeah, but I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole. It's there for you to see. Go see why everybody, go see why it's bad for your brain, like scrolling like that. Mm. But we are in a time where we have been overly saturated with too much information and the brain wasn't designed to do that this thing and this thing and this thing and this thing it was designed to sit and pause in contemplation so that you could illuminate your own direction your own inner wisdom and we're freaking losing that yeah so now we're just sort of victims i say that loosely but if you don't have enough stillness you really are Mm. because you don't have enough awareness to get that that's you you think you're talking about someone else yeah it's you so extrapolate that out 20 years from now 50 I, years it's hard from to now. imagine the, the technology so you just got back from egypt recently yeah. i wanted to bring this up do you see a difference in the stillness if you will to use your term of other cultures and i know that you're also well traveled they're able to unplug disconnect be present better than somebody like me somebody from here totally they all have their things, right? Every, everybody has their thing that's probably not the best thing. But in the world that you're pointing to, here's what's interesting about Egypt. There's a lot of poverty, right? And they've, they've trained, I shouldn't say everywhere, but I, this is just, I can tell you my small experience, what I noticed. They trained even these little kids, right? Little, little. I mean, like four, yeah. three, that's all the tiny little ones, to um, beg, 
Right. Right. They, they, and you could see, why do I say they trained them? Because at, by the end of the trip, they're all sort of saying the same thing. Mm. They have the same funny punchlines. Like they're all programmed to do this. But, and then you'll, some people from our group, like, oh, I feel, or people when I came back, don't you feel bad? And I'm like, no, I, I absolutely don't. Because one, that's their life. They're present in their life. They're just being, and what I did notice, see a lot of people fixate on those little things. What I did notice is how their little banter all day long, like they would just joke with each other, be present with each other, laugh with each other. And yeah, they got shit to do, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. And to us, it might be like, how could you let your child do? That's just their life. And I would, I would dare to say that's better than this thing. Mm -hmm. At least they're in life. Right. At least they're in it. We're right. not even in it. Right. It's a bit. It's a bit egotistical, and ethnocentric to suggest that we have it so much better. No, I would. I you noticed know? that immediately. Now, those were the the busy areas where all the tourists go. Now you go to these other areas, these little villages and stuff, dude. I have never seen anything like it. Maybe something small, kind of like it, in in this little village in Italy I was in once, but. So we're, dri we're driving in there, this big bus to whatever our destination is, and we pass through these villages. And when I tell you, everybody in the village stopped. First of all, just to observe, they're all playing, they're present, the kids are out doing these games that they created with a ball against a thing and a thing and a thing. And they would see the bus, and they would all just light up. Little kids, grown ups. Now the little kids were amped up even more. They were like, you know, it's Christmas Day to see this bus, and they would wave and run after the bus. And I just spent my time staring out the window, making eye contact with whoever I could, mm. and just waving and letting them know I see you, almost to say I love you. you and this know, is I some villages outside of Cairo. Yes, somewhere. I couldn't even. I couldn't point exactly where. Honestly, we so, went to so many so places. So when you observe that. I'd imagine it's not like it's not like driving through Paradise Valley or something oh here, here in Arizona. It couldn't be more opposite. Or, or the Hollywood Hills or something. So you're you're looking at living conditions, you're looking at their clothes, you're looking at their way of life, mm -hmm. um, and you're also seeing things like a ball. <laughs> you know, there's like kids out kicking a ball. Which yeah. you know, if you drive through Paradise Valley right now, you're probably not going to see kids out kicking a ball because they're all inside playing video games or whatever. They so, were so content. But my question is this. My question is. Did you feel any sense of maybe these people are more content or happier than a lot of the people that have more material things in our culture? Because that's what I feel. One when I million percent. One million percent. And and even though they had their little shops where they sold little fruit and little things, they were all sitting there where we, uh, you know, our experience. And again, I'm not separating myself because it's not that like I don't get immersed in this sometimes too. I might just have an awareness mm. that I am so that I could adjust. And for example, like we have a really difficult time being what we would call bored, just sitting there and being. We need to do something, grab something, call someone, right. flip through something where they, what I noticed was they could just be there. Mm. You know, they could just sit there and be there. And then one of their friends cracks a joke and they just start laughing. They're just okay to be there. And I'm telling you, that's one of the greatest gifts life can offer where well, you don't need to go somewhere. There's nowhere to go. Right. Where are you going? Yeah. You there's know? nowhere to do. Like, there's nothing nowhere to, to do. No, nothing to text. Be or where post you are. Or, yeah. I think. I mean. I'm. I, I'll be honest with you. I'm a realist. I'm probably too far gone at this point because I'm just like I'm balls deep in all of all of that stuff. In, in the getting back to the news and the politics and everything that's happening. But I think it's beautiful and it, it pisses me off a little bit. A lot of people that don't even have a passport in this country, or and to each their own, but don't even have a real interest of traveling at all. I guess I shouldn't say it pisses me off, but it, it disappoints me because as someone that has traveled and, and has had similar experiences like you're talking about um, in Egypt, like that could just enlighten. And if you have the means to travel, then I say travel, get the passport, like go through the process because it really, not to sound cliche, but it, it changes your whole life. It changes everything. Yeah, you know? it, And it people could. just don't see it over here. And I it see could. it more with Americans. You know, when you're in Europe, we go state to state to state right within a, a couple hours drive they go country to country to country new food mm. new language new culture mm. so they're already 
cultured in a sense by a product of their geography, you know, and, and a lot of other countries are the same way, you know, in Africa and different places. For us, we're sort of on an island here, not really, but sort of on an island. If you live in middle America, you got to get on a real long plane flight in any direction to get out of this country. A virtual reality island. Yeah, we're, we're kind of on. Right. Yeah. Or Correct. busy. We're busy. We're busy. Or we're in virtual reality. Yeah. But people that have no interest in traveling internationally, like, I can't do business with those type of people. I mean, to me, it's been the most important thing in my life. Mm. You know, waking up in Paris, waking up in Kenya, waking up in Thailand and, and having tea and just observing. It's changed my whole perspective. And I love conversations like this because it reminds me and it gets me out of the cycle I'm usually in of just that just the rat mm -hmm. race. And the, mm -hmm. we always talk about the hamster wheel. And I'm like, oh, no, wait. There are kids in a village outside Cairo right now kicking a ball and just living their life. And, it, and that's okay. That's okay. And that's okay. It's, yeah, and it's not, calming. It's not like they're, they need to plan and scheme for these big grandiose things yeah. and always trying to be, how could I be on The new TV Range Rover. The new, the, yeah. No, they're just so freaking content. Right. Dude. And, and I, I, I really think that's beautiful karma. <laughs> I, whatever you want to call it, that's a beautiful life. Wherever it leads, you're just so in the flow. It's almost like... I'm not comparing them to like literally, but you know how animals, they're just so present or a plant. They're just so present. Well, plants are very present. <laughs> See, <laughs> well, here comes the woo woo, the Ferrari woo woo. Well, plants are very alive. present. True. I'll give you that. Their energy. Yeah. Right? right. Your energy. You might be in a bigger illusion than the plant is because of all the things that you made up about who you are and what you think you are and all the things. Plant doesn't have that. But if you just sit still for a minute and be with these certain like animals or watch an animal, watch, just be with a plant for a minute. There's, there's nowhere to go. And those types of things teach us. But again, we're not, we don't have enough stillness to even allow that happening. It just happens. If you want to make everything so logical, that's what I noticed there. It wasn't like, what can this game that we're playing get us to? What if we make up this game and how much money could it make if we sell it to they're just so present. They're just in what I like to call the great flow. It is kind of a game. We're like a product of a lot of zeros and ones and Wall Street and finance and how the game is, how can I get more zeros in my, this little like account yeah. or whatever it is. It's crazy. Well, that's, I want to interrupt crazy one, to more, about. one more thing. Go about ahead. Because I don't want to say that that's just terrible. It's not. I enjoy that. I'm saying that we've lost touch with the balance right? The, the balance of it all. Because it's right in the center where everything is just in harmony. Where, yeah, we, it's, don't get me wrong, I love abundance. I love really cool material things. Mm -hmm. I love that. But when we're so immersed over there, and listen, you can go so far on the other side, you're just losing people, right? Like, right. you don't make any sense anymore. What are you talking about? Ground yourself. Yeah. What? Yeah. That you can get too yeah. far over there too. So it's all, it's all like that center point. And it's only for us to discover what that is for me, what that is for you. Right. Well, some personal. people are probably like, what is she talking about? No. Okay. And some people are Alexia, like. Alexia, what? Do, does that make sense? Do you think people would be like, what is she talking about? No. <laughs> no. But some people, but some people, my point is you can go only so deep with some people. And then some people are like, no, no, no. Take me levels further down. You know what I'm saying? That's Whether that's generational or cultural, but some people I see, like all those memes, like, oh, at Thanksgiving dinner, like, you know, one beer, one glass of wine in, all of a sudden the one guy is like, you know, the gay yeah, frogs, yeah. the conspiracy, <laughs> a little bit. And like, that's me, sorry. Yeah. Um, and then some people can handle that. And then some people can't handle that, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Uh, have you seen recently, last six months, the Roman Empire has like been trending on like Google Trends and on Twitter and all that, like the Roman I live Empire. Under a rock. Right. Okay. So I've seen it with men for some reason. Roman <laughs> Empire is trending with men. So and I'm not really sure. <sighs> I, it might be this like backlash of like this masculine energy. But but I've I've read some interesting things about it and it goes into what you're saying. What happened to the Roman Empire? It it flourished, right? And then what happened? It fell. Right there, there's no more Roman Empire, right? Mm -hmm. So it fell. So if you look at all of the great empires, all of the great powers of our time in existence, mm -hmm. they've all fallen. So where in that 
pattern in that that arc or arch, I guess you would say, is the United States right now, right? Are we ascending? Are we at, at the top? Are we descending, right? They all fall. They all mm. fall. And I often think about if it fell, mm. if there was something, some terrible natural disaster, uh, asteroids hit, some terrible um, attack where all the power goes out and the grid goes off, how many people in this country, compared to a place like you're talking about in mm. Egypt or, or in Africa or other parts of Asia, how many people could not only physically, but maybe more importantly, emotionally cope with, oh shit, everything that's meaningful in my life, all this materialistic stuff, mm. my bank account, my brokerage account, my 401k, my healthcare, none of it means anything because it's all digital anyways. And now I just got to fend for myself and protect my family. We're not equipped for that. We are not equipped for that. So every civilization falls, and, and I'm not saying, and I hope it does in our lifetime, I hope it never does, I love this country. But eventually, shit hits the fan. That's just the way the world works. So who's more equipped? So we might look down on people from other countries and belittle them and talk down to them and, and, and somehow think that we have it better. But everything is a cycle, and eventually we might be the ones that are having to pick ourselves up, and we're not ready for that. Yeah. I mean, you're making it, no, you're making a good point. And that's why I say, you know, let it be your mission to discover what that balance is for you. Because when you're balanced, when it's not just so extreme in one area or another, and these extreme things do happen externally, the balance, the harmony inside of you, that balance in you allows you to kind of step into the, the new flow. But if you're off balance, that's a very shaky, bumpy, sometimes suicidal right. ride. Well, would you be okay? And I guess it's sort of rhetorical, but I'll ask you, would you be okay or be able to be content with losing everything? Losing everything that's material. I'm it's not talking about, about losing your friends muscle. or your family. I understand what you're saying. Everything material, you, lo you wake up tomorrow, something happens and it's poof, it's gone. Well, I mean, we can only be hypothetical, obviously, because it would be like, hey, Billy, it, do you think you could be okay if somebody shot you in your head and you survived? And you'd be like, oh, God, I don't know. I don't know. I'd like, if I had to guess, and I'm not trying to put myself on a high horse or anything, if I had to guess, it would be about exercising this muscle of acceptance in life. And you know if you exercise that or not just acceptance. If you're somebody that's griping and little gripes, or you think things should be different than what they are, or and you don't have any type of, we'll call it practice, any way of being where it exercises this deep acceptance, which is really coming from inside of you, where you're no longer using these things outside of you to feel a certain way inside of you. If there's some kind of way of being in life that you work that muscle, I'd like to think that it would apply in these extreme situations that you're pointing to. And that's what you work on anyways. That's, to me, there's nothing more important than but that. But you have nice things. I do. You have nice rings what on. Have, you have but a nice... what does that have to do with I said I like nice so things. So they're meaningful to you in some way. Well, you're that's not, an assumption. That's an I, I enjoy. Sorry for my snowsuit. <laughs> right, you have a nice snowsuit on. <laughs> I mean, you have. You know, I mean, look. But, okay. You drove a car here today. Yeah, right? but what? But I still pointed to something. It doesn't make me not in, enjoy the pleasures in life. So that's okay. It's in, okay to enjoy. Just don't be so connected that it's everything. Yeah, I hope. Please don't misunderstand. Listen. The butter, <laughs> yeah. let's, let's take what it off of that. The butterfly night? stage of a relationship, right? Let's take it off of that for a second so we can just like point to the same thing. The butterfly stage, the first stage, you know, when you first meet someone and you're just like, oh my God, this is the best. And you're just like high on some kind of chemical. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Don't interrupt. Just tell me, do you know what I'm talking about? I do. You know, it's an I do period. Right? Alexia, you know what I'm yeah. talking about. Especially the first intimate mm. stuff. You're just like, oh. Or something. <laughs> <It's> making me blush. <laughs> but my point is, does it does it last? Do you, and, and let me let me ask this: If we attach ourselves to that, isn't that like trouble waiting to happen? You attach yourself to that stage. 
But no, because it's a stage. It doesn't last. And actually, that's not even when the real love kicks in. The real love kicks in after that stage, when you're being with each other and accepting one another. And you really like go through all these where you, you don't leave just because you don't like what somebody did. You, you sit and you stay and you learn and you discover how to love somebody unconditionally. All these things. There's beautiful things that come from not attaching. But for the love of God, enjoy it's one of the greatest things ever, the butterfly stage of a relationship. To have these, you know, drive a nice car, nice clothes, nice restaurants. You better believe I enjoy that. But take it away. I, 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 there's a, there's a, a sense of enjoyment coming from inside of me, too. I don't need that to feel that feeling. But we, that's for another show because I could tell you more about what that rabbit hole looked like and the dark night of the soul I experienced when I, that all kind of came to the surface for me. And I really discovered how uh, myself, we as humanity use things and don't realize that we build empires off of this, use things outside of us to help us to feel certain ways inside of us. And suddenly I started... I don't know why this happened. I just started realizing how meaningless mm. so much that we do and what we think we are is. And I was losing sort of this fundamental drive. And I just, I, I've never felt so empty. Yeah. I've never felt so empty. So I say that I'm in no way was I a victim at all. I'm just t expressing an experience, but empty, as dark as that can be, it's also the most beautiful place you could ever be because only when we're empty can we be filled by something that actually has value right we have to go through that great void that great gap that great darkness that uh, nothing means much there mm. empty and then we can create otherwise it's like you know it's whipped cream on shit we're just you know putting shit on top of the same shit yeah. and it's all the same shit yeah yeah. And you're and you're tying yourself, you're tying yourself into material things like I am my house or I am how much money I'm worth or I am my car. Whatever I am it is. my kids. I am. Oh, you can even do deep. Oh, that's a lot of, you know, yeah. I see that a lot. It's not just about money. So that's interesting. I am mm -hmm. my kids. Yeah. You know, I don't have kids. So but, you know, I, I have friends that have kids and it's like everything is related to the kid. You have a father and it's like everything. You know, little Johnny just started playing baseball and he had two hits last week. And in this, and guess what? He got an A on his math. Yeah. And it's like, okay, uh, great. Uh, I love that you, mm -hmm. that you love your kids, but that's an interesting conversation because now you're not living your own life as a man or a woman. You're living vicariously through your children. And we see that a lot. I, and I never looked at that as a negative because I feel like he loves his kids. But in some way, you've lost yourself. Now, this oh. is coming from someone that has never been married. I don't necessarily believe in marriage. We can talk about that at length some other time. I don't believe in a lot of the, the constraints and constructs yeah. of, of our culture in that sense. But becoming someone that is only about your kids, where are the holes in that type of lifestyle? I mean, if, if we all just took a moment and a pause to look, you know, like just look, look at your own life look at others i remember when i was a little girl i i did the my mom put me in these uh, cinderella pageants and my god you know like to see those mothers and and just like their whole life was just on Barf. Uh, yeah what their what their worth was was whether or not this tiny little girl was going to win a cinderella pageant and like what was going on behind these these doors was just Wow. So, but just go look. And, and then the ripple effect of that is that you're now putting this pressure, just that's the, that's the outcome uh, on the child to be in a certain way because that's your life or death. Like your worth is riding on this child to be this certain way. So all these subliminal messages, all these deep subconscious beliefs transfer. And now, I mean, this is not, it's not unusual, right? It's typical. We spend the rest of our lives, you know, sort of deprogramming all of those beliefs that so that we could free who we truly are. So what you do is you kind of cloak over, like mask over who the child really is because you're filtering it through your own being 
So that's enough. Again, we could go on and on, but don't take my word for it. Just go look. And it doesn't have anything to do with like caring for your child. In my humble opinion, caring for your child is holding a space for them uh, to, for their truth to emerge by your space of protection and unconditional love, not who you think they should be. And in fact, even the hierarchy that you know more than them, you might have more like, you know, mama bear shows, don't, don't go into the street, more of those things. Like, let me show you here, here's how to eat. Here's that. But as far as like deep wisdom, they might know way more than you do. And you're not holding the space for that. That is a very interesting way of putting it. And I think a lot of people are going to listen to that and get something from it. And probably it's going to upset some people too. Fine. Um, and then do you ever know parents that had, had this grandiose view for their child yes. and it doesn't go well, it doesn't work out. Yes. You know, little Johnny becomes an artist and is not making any money and is just not the doctor or lawyer that they wanted him to be, mm -hmm. or is addicted to drugs, or is involved mm -hmm. in some type of, you know, whatever, involved with the wrong crowd. And then when those parents go out to those cocktail parties, oh, my son's going here, my son's doing this, my daughter's doing that, and they can't really give a positive, honest update mm -hmm. on little Johnny, you see it crush them. Yeah, and you that's the best thing that could them. ever happen to anybody so that you can start taking responsibility for your own life and your own happiness. I always say the best thing that could ever happen for, to you is be rejected so that you can get that you can't be diminished. That's an illusion to think that somebody's perspective upon you is diminishing to you. So now don't get me wrong. Enjoy the validation. Enjoy, you know, take in with your full heart when people give you compliments and all these things. But the best thing that could ever happen to you is rejection because only through rejection do you get to build your own inner fulfillment, strength, call it confidence, whatever you want, but it's authentic. It's not because you're getting all of these, oh, Billy, oh yeah, you're so great. Let somebody tell you, you suck and sit in that. Don't adjust yourself, just sit, breathe. Let somebody, let, I, I always think those are the greatest lessons I've ever got when people, I mean, you suck. That's like the best. I'm glad you brought this up. I. I could talk for hours on this. I know we don't have hours today, but maybe we can revisit this with a guest that can speak to it. Yeah. Uh, I find it really difficult and unsettling and uncomfortable to talk about kids oh. and to talk about marriage and stuff like that because number one, no kids, no marriage, come from a divorced household. So my opinions aren't really based in experience. They're mostly just based in what I see externally. Okay because I don't have kids. But I have this sense of what it would be like. Were you ever a kid? Maybe, allegedly. You just, I so I mean, I would be. say that's hands on. But, but I think that everything that I, like that you just said about not being, whether it's a helicopter parent or just kind of like letting your, you know, mm. have some guide rails, but like let them do what they want. I don't think I would be that. I think if I was a father, I think I would be much more hands on. I think I would be much more like, hey, I've been this, I'm 50 or whatever, you need to kind of go this way. Just trust me because I've seen this movie mm -hmm. before. So I just don't want to be hypocritical and just start like saying, oh, parents that are obsessed with their kids. I think I would be. That's fair. You know, That's honest. I think I really would be. That's an honest answer. You know, Listen, I mean, and it, it, it's I'm, easy for us to say. No, it's, that's the most difficult thing you could ever do, right? It's like the fast track to enlightenment. Um, so again, I don't pretend to understand. I'm not saying that's easy, but there's the obvious to be with. There's just the obvious to be with. I mean, mm -hmm. talk to your, be with yourself when you had something forced upon you or pressures forced upon you. Check your own data. What did it cause? Talk to your siblings. Talk to your siblings that are now parents. Talk to, I mean, you'll, you'll get your own data and it has not, I'm not, I'm not claiming any of this is easy. It's extraordinary. It's extraordinary to get out of your program, to get out of the way. It takes wild courage. We're going to keep coming back to that mm. every time we talk like wild courage. And this isn't a judgment if that's not the, the path, because by the way, it's all perfect how it unfolds. Like if it, I would say that I definitely had certain 
uh, pressures and things that caused a lot of difficulty in my childhood. And my parents did the best that they could. And that's all we ever have to work with. And today they've grown so much and have discovered so much since. And we have these beautiful conversations today. But if it looked any different, one little flap of a butterfly wing different, I wouldn't be where I am today and have the discoveries that I had through the contrast, through the difficulty. It's, that's really how I began to understand how to deeply connect with people, not separate from them, connect with them. Because I'm not saying, I, by no means by, by these understandings is it proclaiming me to be perfect. It's just deep understandings of the human experience and, and all the more connection when you haven't maybe arrived at that truth yet. That's okay. Mm. Yeah, it's, I think that's it, right. You will. We're all in the path of love. Right. Wherever right. you are on that, and it's not higher, lower, better, worse. It's just, it's all imperfection. So in a sense, there's really no wrong move because in the wrong move, quote unquote, you're going to gain something powerful, some powerful discovery from that. So it's all just, it's, it's, you went left instead of right it, at every turn, who knows what would have happened, right? I mean, we, we might not even be here. Who knows? Like you have different experiences. We wouldn't be having this conversation, you know, who knows? Um, so I just wanted to recap one thing, but it's in the back of my mind. I need to get it out. Go. ADD is kicking in. The Roman Empire thing. Okay. Uh, back to the Roman Empire. <laughs> this is for all the fellows out there. Okay. I, and then I know we, we need to wrap this up because we could talk for hours. We could. And we're getting deep. I have made a deal with myself a long time ago, mm -hmm. a long, long time ago, that if all goes to hell, and I'm not talking about our country or our culture, I'm talking about myself. Mm -hmm. If all goes to hell, Billy Harfash, and things break down, mm -hmm. I have made a deal, a promise with myself, because we have a lot of selves inside, right? We talk, I talk to myself all the time. Okay. You talk to yourself too, we all do. That I can move away somewhere and live in a hundred dollar a month room and do some writing, cook my own food, uh, meet the local people. I'm thinking like somewhere in Southeast Asia. Mm -hmm and live out my days that way. Okay. That, I, that I can divorce myself from all of this, mm. from being on camera, from interviewing influential people, from making money, from trying to get the latest iPhone and greatest car. I can, I can have that kind of kill switch, that little button and say, okay, deuces, I'm and out. And you'll be the guy in the and village. I, and, I, and I'm fine with that. I made that deal to myself. That's beautiful. That's like a golden parachute for me because I've already confirmed that in my brain that wow, I can do that. I like the way you function. That's powerful. And so that gives me the ability to take risks. It gives me the ability to live in yeah. some sense of freedom. That's great. I love Because that. I'm there. That's incredible. Like I'm there. I'll put my, you know, a pair of jeans and a white t-shirt. and That's, that's cool. That's really beautiful. It's like somehow through that whole thing you've You've accessed how to even communicate with your subconscious to let you sort of like be free because no matter what, go ahead, create your worst fear, create it, go ahead, you lose it all. That's the worst, you lose everything. Everything. And then you're like, and and then that's even gonna be just perfectly fine. That's even And fine. so then you're just, the subconscious is like, all right, we'll set the man free then, let yeah. it go away. Yes. Yeah, it's really and, great. And almost it. like it's your own in, internal Roman empire that yeah. if it falls, if Billy Harfash falls, if Angela Ferrari falls, it's almost like, well, shit, it might happen. It might be kind of fun. There could <laughs> like, be a I'm whole, welcoming it. honestly, there fun. could be a whole class, like really like a class, three month class, whatever, year long class that, that shows how to get to that, because you just said it's it's in there. Like you, I hear the confidence in, oh, yeah, in what 100%. you're saying. Like I have made that choice, and it's solidified. It's mm -hmm. anchored. It is in there. Yeah. But there's a journey for a lot of people to actually get to be so okay with that. Okay, and and then you have that clicking in. Like <sighs> it's quite okay. selfish to be honest. Okay. That's why I'm not married and I don't have kids. It is quite selfish because I've always had that deal since a very young age. In, in my head and it's developed over the years, but it's selfish. I'm not going to diminish it. I don't. I don't but if I had kids I or I had a wife and a family and all these responsibilities. 
All I, I wouldn't life, be able to hit that button. All of life is selfish, Billy. All of it, because you're in your own reality that nobody else is in, and it's just, it's all for you. Could you go live in a $100 room in Southeast Asia, yeah. eating rice and, and veggies? There'd be in a period of adjustment, <laughs> but I could. <laughs> I could. There'd be a period of adjustment, but I could adjust. I don't know if I'm confident in that answer. You could do it. If all, if the Roman Empire of Ferrari What else collapses, am I going to do? Run around with like a chicken with its head cut off and just start screaming so or just start running? You, what do you do? You just do it. You could go to a village in Indonesia, learn a little bit of the local culture, learn how to cook the food, and live in a room for $100 a month and live out your Ferrari days. I could. I'm with you. I could. I could do it too. Okay. I'm yeah. excited for that. Mm -hmm. um, I know you could, Miss Musician, kind of who's fun. off camera. It kind of, Bring yeah, your good guitar. Sure in a way. Yeah. Doesn't it? I feel like they're... I don't call me this. This may be wrong, but I feel like if there's some spiritual connection too, like some kind of connection with something that's beyond the veil, beyond this reality, then you could just sort of be in union with that. I uh, probably shouldn't share it. Like, I secretly want it all to go to hell because I am like. <laughs> you I, want the golden parachute? <laughs> I want to take my parachute ride. I want. I want to see if I can do it. I feel. I'm like, ready. I feel like we should have. Everybody meet Alexia. So I'm gonna Yes. Ask. Let's do that. Alexia. There she is right there, ladies and gentlemen. You have no idea what this chick is up to back here. And she's smarter than all of us. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that was an enlightening conversation. I, there was a flow there. For I sure. hope that we um, woke some people up a little bit. Uh, I think even if you're a parent and you hear some of your views on parenting, I think that there's some really good nuggets in there and I hope it maybe upsets some people too because when I get upset, that's when I learn. I like it. Yeah. If everything was just so agreeable, right. we'd all just be very stagnant. And if you're in your moment and you're ready to hit that uh, eject button, I do know some $100 rooms for you. So I can point you <laughs> in the right direction. And I'm being serious. Yeah, I know where to go. I do Perfect. know where to go. Okay. That was fun. Let's do it again soon. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hey everyone, we're at the Pad Lab Studio in Scottsdale, your go-to for real estate and mortgages. Whether you're buying, selling, or need financing, trust their two decades of expertise. Visit padlabaz.com to kickstart your journey. And if you're a pro seeking a dynamic team, check out padlabcareers.com. Let's make moves with Pad Lab.